It's easy to understand why folks live alongside a desert preserve. The natural beauty is unique and majestic. But along with the human population are a few million scorpions who just love to sting you. They also enjoy the arid climate and rocky terrain. And that's where scorpion sweepers come in. You look like Justin. Yep. How are you? I'm Mike. Nice to meet you, Mike. Thanks for uh, doing this with us. Yeah, no problem. So it's scorpion sweeping. Do you, do you literally sweep them? Uh, we sweep with the light. So we use black lights because scorpions actually glow under UV light. Well, that's fascinating. Yeah. Why does that happen? Part of their exoskeleton just uh, has the right chemical compounds and stuff mm -hmm. to, to glow. Um, and we're not really sure why. No one really knows. There's not really a consensus. It could be to um, be a warning sign because at night, a lot of animals can't see very well at night but they can see in UV pretty well. So it could be a way to be like advertising, hey, I'm scary and I have a nice, uh, nasty sting, don't mess with me. Have you been stung or bit or run into cactus um, yourself? I've run into plenty of cactus. <laughs> it is miserable. Yeah, um, never been stung while working. I've been stung at my own house, not following my rules, but. Well, that's <laughs> ironic. Yeah. <laughs> You've never been stung on the job, but been stung at home. Yep. <laughs> Funny stuff, Justin. I'll need to keep on my toes, not just for his witty jabs, but for the literal jabs from the many sharp things in the desert that can poke, stab, and bite me. I'm clearly not dressed properly, <laughs> am I? No, not at all. <laughs> uh, okay, long pants, uh, long shirt, yep. would be ideal. Yeah, yeah, uh, we'll be going out here in the desert, so uh, everything's got thorns, everything's got teeth. <laughs> a lot of pricks Every out here in the desert, <laughs> right. lots. You know what I like about the desert? Everything. Now we're Got talking. some khaki for you. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, before it gets completely dark, let's take one more real good look at Justin. We're going to be here for the next eight hours or so, but this is probably the last time we're going to see him. Probably the last time we're going to see you, too. Well, they, they know what I look like, <laughs> but this is new for you. So let's just take five seconds, play some appropriate music, and let's just drink Justin in. <laughs> Gotta do like a little, little yeah. 180. Justin Klaus. <laughs> putting the bay in beige like nobody else. I feel like I'm like standing under an exit sign. Or... You look like a rotisserie chicken right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like one. I feel like one, really. If you just ran a little steel up my spine and started spinning me. I mean, it's about 100 degrees out here still. Now I'm under a red light. Scorpion sweeping is pretty straightforward. Walk around the darkened desert with a black light and see what pops up. I got the granddaddy of black lights for you. So scorpions are gonna uh, be able to glow under this. Uh -huh. This is how we're gonna find them tonight. You already got your snake gators on. I do. We're gonna carry one of these guys around. It's just a watertight box that we can keep all of our scorpions in. And uh, what, what are we gonna do with them? Tonight, we're just gonna freeze. So we are, we're a chemical-free company. We don't use any chemicals. You have to freeze them at like really, really cold temperatures mm -hmm. because they will come back to life. They have an antifreeze built into their blood. We're ready to go scorpion hunting. There's a lot to worry about as you stumble through the desert after dark. Tarantulas, black widows, neurotoxic, venomous scorpions, cacti, rattlesnakes, inner demons. Just make sure you're watching your step. There's lots of cactus out here. The rocks and stuff are easy to trip on. And that's definitely one you don't want to run into. Uh, it's just It just seems, well, in the dark, just a harmless little bush. Yeah, I mean, you can go hug it if you want. No, thanks. You know, it's worth repeating. These things are brown, like everything else. They're yeah. absolutely invisible by day. Pretty much, yeah. Everything in Arizona's got that nice brown color. <laughs> <laughs> you should write travel brochures. <laughs> Justin and I are following the home's property line. Any scorpion on Mark and Chris's land is fair game. Honestly, though, until like we started looking for them for black lights, I mean, they have remained relatively unchanged other than size for about 400 million years. Um, they were the first predators on land. And I mean, outside being about three feet long as opposed to a few inches, mm -hmm. uh, they've not really changed at all. I do uh, zookeeping by day and scorpion hunting by night. Do you really? Yeah. So how long have you been a zookeeper? About uh, a decade now. So I have a degree in biology, which is kind of why uh, I do this at night, because I thought this is a pretty cool second gig. I found scorpion sweepers. Uh, it seemed like a really good fit, because I like educating people about the uh, environment that they're living in. and like. Yeah, scorpions are a pest out here, but they're a really cool creature that was here before we were. And so, you know, dealing with them appropriately is better than just, you know, spraying chemicals and things like that around that, you know, we have no idea what they're gonna do in 10 years. There's our first one right there. Look at that little guy. Yeah, so that's a bark scorpion. One of the three we'll find out mm -hmm. here. It's the smallest one, but it's also the uh, most venomous. 
Isn't that funny, the way so many things that are small yep. are like, like the worst? Yep. Forceps? Yep. Now, is he likely to move, I evade? Like to, if, if he feels your vibrations, yeah. So usually what I like to do, I like to get our box to a nice, secure location. So when it's full of scorpions, we don't trip on it in a minute, because there's nothing worse than tripping on a box of scorpions. You say this like a guy it's happened to. <laughs> that right there. So when we do it, one thing I will warn you, try not to put your knee on the ground, because you don't know if that rock's got a scorpion under it or that rock's got a scorpion on it. So I never go knees to the ground. Right. Um, always look, if you're going under something, look above you first, because you don't want one falling down your shirt. No. <laughs> got it. And we're going to aim for the tail. Just that Ooh, one. Look at him, he's quick. Yeah, they're a little faster tonight, because it's a little warmer. Oh, he just went down a hole. Yeah. Oh, you got him. Yeah, so usually we try to aim for the tail. Uh huh. They've got a nerve ending in there. They just go motionless like that. Like they'll just like hold their pincers out and whatnot. Right. Like that. So that's his, that's his stinger right there. Note to self: avoid that. And so, if if this guy were to, were to get you. Yeah. What would it feel like? Um, it kind of depends on the person a little bit, but. Let's say me. So uh, anywhere from like a bee sting to like an electric shock. Uh huh. Um. You can have a variety of different symptoms from uh, just numb, tingly feelings wherever he stings to uh, increased blood pressure, vomiting, fevers, things like that. And if you're really unlucky, you could be looking at a lethal sting. So what you're saying is don't get stung. Don't get stung. It's not fun. It goes without saying that I'm doing my best to avoid getting stung. All right, there's number one. But with our first quarry safely locked in the box, that's one less scorpion to worry about. There's another one. That one's going to be yours, right Mike. There. Okay. All right, so we want to be quick. So once you get those forceps out there, you got to go like a frog's tongue. There you go. That's a great grab. Your first scorpion. Son, you're a man now. I mean, it looks so completely green. Yeah. But it's not at all. Yeah. If you turn off your black light. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're looking at. I think I've got him right by the stinger. Yep. Got control of the, the danger end, so that's perfect. So we're up to two. What is this rustling I keep hearing? Uh, that's like, the plants out here, the brittle bush. Kind of sounds like a, a rattlesnake sometimes. It does. <laughs> you know what else sounds like a rattlesnake? Hmm. A rattlesnake. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's zoological knowledge makes him a natural for navigating in the desert. You might say he's moonlighting in the moonlight. Well, we got our third guy right under here. Mike, you got to get a little faster at spotting them. Where? Where, where? Come back to this side of the rock? Oh, yeah. Look at that little guy. Boom. <laughs> Where do you think you're going, dude? We got a long night left. What time did you get up this morning? What time did I get up this morning? Yeah. What kind of hours you keep? Oh, I have my day job, so I actually uh, was up at 4. You were up at 4 a.m. <laughs> and you went to the zoo? Yep. Scorpions don't sleep. <laughs> well, neither do you, man. You're going to be up 24 hours before the dust settles here. I will be honest, out here, we've definitely seen mountain lions and stuff, and I've definitely had, like, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up, that like, instinct, that primal feeling that you're being watched. Yeah. So some of those nights, you're just, like, looking behind you every five seconds, but... I can't believe you're not out here with a buddy. Nope, uh, I carry uh, bear spray on me just in case, but... Are there uh, bears out here, too? No, but, I mean, good enough for bears, it's got to be good enough for mountain lions, right? <laughs> it seems logical, but it, I'd, I'd hate to find out the answer is no. <laughs> There we go, right back in that bush. That one's gonna be kind of a hard grab. Doink, oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. He's on the move. Ah, got him. Nice grab. Oh. Where were you going? In such a rush, little man. All right. Surprised myself on that one, honestly. So who's the greatest scorpion catcher there is? Is there, is there like a legend in your business? I think for as far as scorpion sweepers our company goes, I think I have the highest number currently. Really? I mean, I had, I did that house at 300 in one night. I caught him in about an hour and a half. Just 300 scorpions one night in the house. <laughs> That's the guy you want to call. Justin Klaus. <laughs> scorpion man.